Okay, so you're gonna look for somebody in your market that you're wholesaling in. So if you're in Columbus, Ohio, and you wanna do Phoenix, Arizona, then go to Phoenix, Arizona, and you've got three ways to do it. You can find investor buyers. Again, always look for your buyers first, okay? So find your cash buyers in that market, and that's easy to do. You can go on Facebook and join groups and look for who the cash buyers are in those markets. You can go on Craigslist, you can call uh, title companies, and then there are softwares that you can purchase that show you cash buyers in different markets, multiple cash buyers. So find your buyers first. They can be uh, your acquisition person. Because again, you're gonna, as a virtual wholesaler, you're tying it up on the phone. You're not relying on an appointment. That's the difference. That's why it's virtual, okay? But if you do have to have an appointment, you got your investor buyer. Second thing is gonna be a realtor, okay? Uh, if you don't wanna deal with another wholesaler. Uh, second thing is gonna be a realtor. Find a realtor in the market because if you can't buy it, well then they can get a listing and they can pay you a marketing fee. Big gold nugget for your audience. Just because you can't buy it doesn't mean you can't make money on it, okay? If you can't buy a property, have a realtor that you have a relationship with that will pay you a marketing fee, not a referral, but a marketing fee for that listing, you know, and when they get a deal. Most realtors pay 25% of their commission for a referral from another realtor. So if you're asking a thousand bucks for a marketing fee when that deal closes, and realtors will line up all day long to take your deals. So monetize the deals that you can't do with a realtor. Uh, third way is going to be wholesalers. So in markets you want to be virtually wholesaling in, you know, find other wholesalers and, and you know, do joint ventures with them or pay them a fee uh, to go be your acquisitions manager and just have an agreed upon fee for each deal. Again, if you've got the buyer and you've got the contract, there's nothing to JV, you just pay them a fee. Most wholesalers will go look at a house for a thousand bucks, 500 bucks. Absolutely. So, um, you know, if anybody needs help in their business and, and they're looking for somebody to, you know, help them looking to get into development, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, single family homes doing spec houses or doing uh, small infill developments or even ramping up to where they're uh, a regional builder in their area uh, doing subdivision type developments. I've done, you know, some subdivision deals where I've taken a chunk of land and turning it, turning it into a mixed use subdivision. Um, so you can do those types of things. We didn't even really talk about land. There's a whole nother business model of, you know, flipping land, developing land, you know, doing things like that. Things And, you know, I do some coaching and consulting. So if, if people are serious and they want to ramp a business up and, uh, you know, uh, they're, Usually it's somebody who's a little bit more advanced, um, you know, to be able to work with me doing what I'm doing. Um, and, uh, you know, leadership is the most important thing. I, you know, if I can say anything over and over today about how to scale your business, how to grow your business, you got to develop yourself as a leader, which means first and foremost, you're a servant. You're serving that organization, everybody in it. You're serving your clients and your customers. No matter what business you're in, if you want to grow and scale a business, you got to develop yourself as a leader. One Minute Manager System is the best management leadership system out there. It's how I scaled every business using that system. Um, and you got to be willing and, and have the ability to, to delegate. And again, you know, we talked about that earlier where, you know, a lot of people are afraid to delegate. People are afraid to tell somebody what to do or ask somebody what to do. You know, if you're a leader and you're inspiring people, they want to do more, they want to help. So don't be afraid to delegate tasks and say, you know, hey, Daniel, you know, I need you to, you know, I need you to make those 20 calls today. And then when you're done with that, I need you to take these deals to here and I need you to go there, check on this house, go in there. Let me know when you're done. Let's catch up later. You know, that's not being bossy. That's not being rude. It's like, Daniel, you and I work together. This is your role. Hey, man, I need you to go by, you know, Main Street, Elm Street, and check on that. And then, by the way, I've got these six contracts. we got to go do this. Let me know. And then I'm going to go over here. So it's just delegating, right? It's just whatever you don't have time to do, find somebody to, to fill those pieces in. And the other thing in my organizations is I hired people better and smarter than me doing what they do. I've never built a house with my hands. When I built my first million dollar home, I've never built a house. I hired people who did. I've never built a hotel. I've never built an office building. I hired general contractors who do. So I find professionals who are good at what they're doing and I coach them to succeed.